So today we're going to cover four key areas. Uh, we literally were looking through our notes on all the things we learned from customers and things that we've seen that went really well and things that didn't maybe go so well and things that people didn't think of till the last minute and all those kinds of things. And we tried to put them into a framework that ended up being uh, infrastructure audit, configuring your session border controller for direct routing and 911. Testing SIP and E911, because th that second piece is really important. And finally, creating a migration cohort and a rollback plan so that when you go to implement Microsoft Teams, it's not sort of a, a lob over the fence, but you've got a real plan for being able to toggle back and forth until everybody's happy with the new, with their new configurations. So just a level set. And most of you probably know this already, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, Microsoft has two options for PSTN access within Teams. The first option is their calling plans, which are awesome, by the way. They're simple, they're easy to configure, and they're really probably the best option for a lot of small businesses out there. And, there, and th there's absolutely nothing wrong with those. So as you start to scale, or if you have some complex infrastructure, a lot of times direct routing is a better option. And so that's what we're gonna be focusing on today, but I just wanted to do a quick level set to make sure we're on the same page. So let's start with making an infrastructure audit and plan for your migration. Now this may sound really obvious and maybe it is to some of you, but this basically means let's get everything set up and everything thought through. And then when we start to cook, we're good. And that's kind of what this list is meant to be for you. It's meant to be a checklist that's really concrete that you can take and use and make sure you've got all this information gathered. First thing is to make sure all of your users have licenses. This is an easy one to overlook, especially if you've, you've been using Teams for a while. But if you're gonna be using Teams for PSTN access, you're gonna to need to make sure that you've got a license that has Microsoft phone system. So, Phone system is included in the E5 licenses, but if you're using E1s or E3s, and we see a lot of E3s out there as an example, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've added on the phone system license for each of those users. Next thing you wanna think about is make sure you bring in your IT department or whoever it is who's managing your DNS because there is some DNS work that needs to be done because Microsoft requires FQDNs that are gonna to need to have certs on them because they require TLS SRTP for this integration. So really important to bring that team in. And some of your business, some of you may have the IT department who manages that as a part of your department. And that's great, but we see a lot of situations where your teams, your UC teams may be a different group of people than the people who are managing your network. Next thing to think about is your session border controller. So your session border controller needs to be one of the certified Microsoft session border controllers, and it needs to be running a certified version of the software. So we do see a lot of times customers will have the right SBC, but the wrong software version. So those just checking on that, making sure the software has been upgraded where it needs to be is great. We got Ribbon, Audio Codes, Oracle, TE Systems, Metaswitch, and Cisco. All of these session border controllers are certified for Microsoft Teams. But another thing you're gonna to wanna to think about too is not all the session border controllers are certified for 911. So the number that are certified keeps growing every day and I imagine all of them will be certified pretty soon, but they aren't all certified today. Next up, let's talk about making an inventory of your users and your phone numbers. Again, this may seem obvious, but if you've had your existing phone service from the same carrier or the same cable co for a really long time, we actually find there are a lot of widows and orphans out there. There's a lot of numbers you're not using. There may be numbers that you're using. We ha actually had this happen. We had it happen where a customer had a couple of numbers that they were using that they were not paying for. They were not on any of their bills. They had a bunch of different bills from the same telco provider. And on none of those bills were some of the numbers that they were using. So making sure you've got that locked down because when we go to port, and we'll find a lot of these issues when we port these numbers over to bandwidth. So a lot of this will come to light, but having that all done before you do your team's migration is gonna make your life a lot easier. 
So the next thing we're gonna think about is your IVR because you're now gonna be mapping that out and programming your IVR in Microsoft Teams. So knowing, understanding, making sure you have your call recordings, making sure you have your voicemail recordings, making sure you know how you want those calls to flow when calls come into your business is something that's really important to map out before you get started. Last piece we're gonna talk about in terms of your infrastructure audit and your migration checklist is your network topology. So this is really, really critical for 911 for emergency calling because no longer is your phone number gonna be the thing that tells the location to the PSAP. It's now gonna be the network element that that call came from. So making sure that those network elements are configured in a way that you can isolate the call to a floor or to an area of a floor or to a campus is gonna be important. And we've seen situations where some of our customers have had to remap their subnet. So they create a subnet for every floor because they used to have a subnet that covered a couple of floors. Sometimes they had these super powerful Wi-Fi access points and that, that basically were able to cover half a building and they dial those down and add more to try to make them more localized. So there's things you can do there, but having it mapped out so that you are ready when we go to upload all of this information into Microsoft Teams is gonna be important. So next thing, let's talk about configuring your session border controller for direct routing and E911. Now, obviously I am not gonna be able to walk you all through configuring your session border controllers. The good news, however, is that I have checked out a lot of the documentation and it is getting so much better. So each of the session border controller vendors has put a lot of time and effort into documentation for how to configure the session border controllers with Teams. But the one thing that's easy to forget and the one thing I wanted to touch on here is that you've, you've got these four players, right, that you've got to all synchronize in order to make a phone call work within Microsoft Teams for direct routing. You've got Microsoft Teams, of course, you've got the session border controller and you've got your carrier and everybody always talks about those things and it's pretty common. But the thing that's easy to miss is that DNS piece. So as I mentioned before, you have to have an FQDN for Microsoft Teams. And in order to do that, you have to not only prove that you have ownership of it, but you have to get a cert for it. So here's a screenshot in the Office 365 tenant because you're actually going to configure this in Office 365. You're not going to be configuring this in, in Microsoft Teams, which people also find confusing. But you're going to prove that you have ownership of the domain that you want to use. So let's say I'm creating sbc.bandwidth.com and sbc2.bandwidth.com. And I'm going to use those as my FQDNs and I'm going to go ahead and get certs for those domains. I'm going to need to make sure that those domains are registered in my team's tenant. So if you're using a subdomain of, of a domain you've already registered, this may be a non-issue, but just, just keep this in mind. It's a setup that you're going to have to do that's going to be out there. So add it to the checklist. Third thing we're gonna talk about today is testing your SIP and your E911 connectivity. So obviously before you can test 911, you have to be able to make a voice phone call. So we're gonna start with the voice side. So the first thing we're gonna do once we've got a test user set up, and it's always great to start this with a test user before we start rolling it out. So that's probably a foregone conclusion, but we're gonna test your voice services. So we're gonna test inbound calls, outbound calls, putting calls on hold, navigating your IVR, transferring calls, any of the functionality that you want to do within the PBX functionality of Teams, we're going to test that. Then we're going to test 911. And this is really critical, particularly with all of the regulations that have that are recently been implemented. So we're talking about Ray Bombs Act and Kerry's Law. We're talking about making sure that when a 911 call is placed, the location information is there and is being passed properly, and also making sure that the notification is happening at the time of that call. Now, obviously we don't wanna call 911 all the time, right? We don't wanna bug PSAPs and overload them and for every single user. So Bandwidth has a 933 testing service, and what you do in the Teams tenant is simply add 933 as a dial string 
to your call routing policy. And then when you dial 933, the Teams, Teams is thinking, oh, that's a 911 call, which is great because now you can test it. So you'll see on this screen, big red emergency call in progress. And then you'll see the phone number of the user and the civic address. But you'll also see that really important part, which is the floor two, which is in fine print on the bottom line there. But that floor two is the dispatchable location that the first responders are gonna need in order to be able to locate any of your employees who are having trouble. The last piece we're gonna talk about today, and maybe this is really two pieces, is creating effective cohorts for migration and building rollout plans. So now we're really getting to the point where, all right, we're really going to roll this thing out now. It's time to go. How do we start? So I think this visual kind of describes where we are, right? You've got users all over the place. You've got maybe different systems. We have a lot of customers who are using not just one UC platform today, but multiple UC platforms today. You might have Skype for Business here, or Cisco there, Avaya here. You might have a cohort of users that are trialing Microsoft Teams with calling plans. And the goal here is to migrate that all of these users up to the cloud and onto Microsoft Teams. So well, how do you do that, right? How do you start thinking about rolling out? And the, the first thing to think about is what are the groupings that I wanna use for this rollout? So typical groupings here are departmental cohorts, which is just like you might think and perhaps the most obvious, IT, sales, finance, any of the departments that you have. One of the things that we have noticed is it's good to do smaller departments or maybe your IT department first. The IT departments often like to go first because you know they're testing it, right? Uh, and then And leave the more customer facing or more infrastructure critical um, migrations until later. Second cohort are what we call special business needs cohorts. So these might be, we've seen clean rooms or high security areas things that need special attention or special handling, executive suites. So obviously, you know, high touch, high visibility, high value um, teams, and then customer service teams. So those are good to think about as their own cohorts. You also might consider location-based cohorts. So this totally makes sense if you've got branches, if you're a bank or if you're a retail store, you've got, or you're, you're a healthcare provider who's got multiple locations, you may wanna do this branch first, this branch second, headquarters last, or however you want to do it, or headquarters first, branches last. And the last thing to consider is maybe grouping people by system, particularly if you've got multiple UC systems in use throughout your organization today. So if you have, you know, Skype for Business as an example, or if you have Avaya over here, wherever you have different systems, think about migrating one system so you can decommission and then move on to the next. Because obviously the de decommissioning part is a big part of the cost savings that you get by migrating to some of these cloud platforms. If you set this up properly, this does not have to be a migration where you serve the ball over the fence and there's nobody there to hit it back. So you're hoping it's an ace because you're stuck. You've moved, you're done. What we like to do is we like to migrate all of the numbers to bandwidth but keep them in a location on your old system and then migrate them over to your new system. So looking at this picture on the left-hand side, you'll see locations and you'll see I've set up a location for the old system and then for Microsoft Teams. We're gonna start with all the numbers living in the old system and you can make as many of these as you want. But what we wanna be able to do is migrate the cohorts of numbers over, but then if anything goes wrong, we really had this happen. So we, we really had situations like this happen where an executive didn't get trained and wasn't quite ready and wanted another week on the old service, or a branch didn't have sufficient bandwidth in their Wi-Fi to be able to handle all the voice calls, or the firewall router had some settings that needed to be changed. So all of these things that have nothing to do with teams and have nothing to do with bandwidth are things that can need configurations and can need fixing before you fully migrate over to Teams. And so we don't want this to have to be a permanent thing. We want you to be able to roll back, roll forward, roll back, roll forward. Once everything is solid, then we can just decommission the old location. And in our dashboard, this happens in real time. You literally just a few clicks of a button and you've now changed those numbers from routing to your old system to routing to your new system. So it's really pretty easy and straightforward. So I think that's about all of our time. So to recap, 
we've been talking about four areas to think about as you're migrating to Teams. The first one is the mise en place concept, making sure you've got a checklist and you've got everything set up. Second, making sure that when you're thinking about configuring your SBC, you rope in your IT department and you think about the certs and the domains and the FQDNs that you're gonna be using for implementing direct routing. Third piece, and obviously a really critical piece, is testing your service, and, and in particular, testing E911 to make sure that it's configured properly. And lastly, creating a migration plan with cohorts and rollback capabilities so that when you're actually in the process of rolling out Microsoft Teams, you've got options to move your numbers back and forth. So I think that's about all the time we have today. Thanks very much for your time.